Why did agents of the US Secret Service hunt for this coin for many years to destroy all copies? This coin was banned, stolen, and secretly hidden. The US government was sued for this coin. In 2021, this coin was sold at a Sotheby's auction for $18.8 million, making it the most expensive coin in the world. This is the story of the $20 coin, Double Eagle, of 1933, why is it so expensive, and why did they want to destroy it all the time? In order to understand why the 1933 Double Eagle is so expensive, we need to determine what exactly makes rare coins expensive. Metal, yes, old age, yes, circulation, yes. But most importantly, what gives the most value to any collectible item is the history of this item, and the more incredible and complicated this story is, the higher the price of this item will be. Double Eagle of 1933, this is a coin that is not even 100 years old, it is gold, but the metal itself is only 33.4 grams. It has a limited mintage, but there are many other limited mintage coins that don't even cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. So why did the 1933 Double Eagle sell at auction in 2002 for $7.5 million, and in less than 20 years, in 2021, the coin had increased in value by more than $10 million and was already sold for $18.8 million. This is all because of the history of this coin, it is so incredible that Hollywood will definitely make a movie about it someday. And before we tell the story of the most expensive coin, we will tell you about the entire series of Double Eagle coins, one of the most famous series of gold coins not only in the USA but also in the world. Because in addition to the history itself, the fact that the coin belongs to this series serves as a kind of multiplier, and also adds a very large value. Let's move to 1795. 19 years after the USA became an independent state, it was in this year that the largest denomination coin at that time, $10, was minted. On the obverse of this coin was Freedom in a Phrygian cap, who watched a video about French euros, he remembers that the Phrygian cap is a symbol of freedom from ancient Rome, worn by freed slaves. The national symbol of the USA, the bald eagle, was placed on the reverse of this coin. Among the people, this $10 coin quickly got the name Eagle. Based on the name Eagle, $5 coins were called Half Eagle, and $2.5 coins were called Quarter Eagle. And when, in 1849, the US minted a $20 coin, it was immediately nicknamed the Double Eagle. The Double Eagle is a very famous coin series that was minted almost every year between 1849 and 1933. There were considerable discussions in the US Senate at one time for the introduction of a $20 coin into circulation. At that time, the largest denomination was the Eagle, a $10 coin, this coin became the world standard, and this coin was often used for US foreign trade. But nevertheless, the denomination of only $10 made its use inconvenient for large businesses that made calculations in gold bars and high denomination gold coins of Latin America. Everything changed in 1848, when gold was discovered in California, and the California gold rush began. At that time, the amount of gold in the USA increased significantly, and in the Senate with a great creek, but nevertheless, they adopted a law allowing the minting of gold coins with a denomination of $20. By the way, the denomination of $20 is still the largest denomination among circulating coins of the United States. During its existence, the Double Eagle has undergone several design changes. The first coins from 1850 to 1865. Also called Liberty Head Double Eagle, these coins were designed by James Longacre. On the obverse, the head of Liberty looks to the left, on her head is a crown with the inscription, Liberty, a semicircle of 13 stars, this is the number of colonies that signed the Declaration of Independence. Under the head of Freedom, the year of coinage. On the reverse, the symbol of the United States is a bald eagle, holding a double ribbon with the Latin inscription, E Pluribus Unum, out of many, one. The double ribbon is a reference to the $20 denomination. Eagle holds a shield that symbolizes the nation. The olive branch and arrows in the eagle's paws symbolize that the US wants peace, 
but is always ready for war. There are also 13 stars and an arcade of rays above the eagle's head in the form of a nimbus. In a semicircle above, the inscription United States of America, below 20D, above this inscription, the mint mark. By the way, at the time of its release, this design was heavily criticized in American newspapers as not very high quality and secondary. But now, in our time, numismatists highly appreciate it. Expensive coins from this period are almost all, but the one I want to note the most is the coin of 1849, only one copy of this coin is known, which is now in the numismatic collection of the Smithsonian Institution. 1866-1876, the change in design took place after the Civil War, when a law was passed, which required large enough coins to mint the famous motto, In God We Trust. This inscription was placed in a nimbus of 13 stars above the eagle's head, another major change took place with the shield, it became more figured. An expensive coin from this period is an 1870 coin struck by the Carson City Mint in Nevada. It was the year the Carson City Mint opened, and few coins were struck. One of these coins was sold at an auction in 2009 for $414,000. 1877 to 1907. On the obverse, the portrait of Liberty was moved up a little, so that the crown became between the stars. This was done in order to make more room for the minting of the year, under the head of Liberty. On the reverse, the inscription on the ribbons, E Pluribus Unum, was enlarged, and in the lower semicircle instead of 20D wrote $20. Expensive coins of this period are coins of 1883, 1884, 1887 of the Philadelphia Mint. At the time, almost all of the double eagles were minted in San Francisco, so the Philadelphia mintages were very small. A small mintage of coins from 1879 at the New Orleans Mint is also known. And the 1906 coins were minted by the Denver Mint, which was the year the mint opened, so mintages there are also small. 1907 to 1933, a significant change in design occurred in 1907. These double eagles are called St. Gaudens Double Eagle after their author. And many consider the design of this mount to be the best design in the history of the United States. The story began back in 1904, when Theodore Roosevelt became the President of the United States, he wanted to update the design of coins, make it more modern and attractive. For this, he recommended the sculptor Auguste St. Gaudin, who, by the way, had previously worked with the mint, but after his medal design for the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago was rejected, he vowed to have nothing to do with the mint. But he responded to the president's request. Roosevelt and St. Gaudin were supporters of high relief, as on ancient Greek coins. High relief was opposed at the mint, as it was impractical and the coin would wear off, losing its precious weight. Roosevelt's argument was that double eagles are used for foreign trade and rarely leave bank vaults, so they should not be erased. Another dispute with the mint arose over the Roman numerals that St. Gaudin wanted to use for the mint year, while the mint wanted to use Arabic numerals. High relief could not be achieved due to technical reasons. To save money, coins are minted with one punch, and the relief that St. Gaudin and Roosevelt wanted required up to nine punches. Currently, there are 20 pattern coins with high relief, which are called ultra-high relief or extra-high relief, one of these coins was sold at an auction in 2005 for $2,990,000 of dollars. Disputes about the relief continued for a long time, and St. Gaudin, who fell ill with cancer, did not live to see the coin go into circulation. His work was continued by his assistant Henry Herring. Roosevelt directly ordered to mint high-relief coins, even if it took all day to mint one coin. And in 1907 and 1908, 12,000 high-relief coins were minted, but the main circulations were still minted with low relief. In total, three different designs of the double eagle were minted in 1907. This is the old Liberty Head double eagle design, the St. Gaudin variant with the year of mintage in Latin numerals, and the variant reworked by the mint's chief engraver, Charles Barber, with the year of mintage in Arabic numerals and not as high relief. On the obverse side of the coin, full-length liberty strides majestically on the rocks. 
Behind liberty, you can see the capital and the rays of the sun. In the hands of freedom is a torch that symbolizes enlightenment, and an olive branch is a symbol of peace. The year of minting is lower right, below the year is the monogram of Saint Gauden, and the mint mark was minted above the year. The 46 stars in the semicircle represent the 46 states that made up the United States at the time. On the reverse, a bald eagle in flight, in the background the sun with rays. Above is the inscription United States of America, and $20. In order not to oversaturate the composition, the motto, E Pluribus Unum, St. Gauden placed coins on the edge. Another scandal arose after the coin was put into circulation. Roosevelt asked St. Gauden not to add the famous motto, In God We Trust, because, in Roosevelt's opinion, it would rather besmirch the name of God, since the coins could also be used by criminals. And St. Gauden agreed that there should be no superfluous design elements, and nothing should distract from the main composition. But the U.S. Congress was against it, and already in 1908 the inscription appeared on the reverse around the sun. Another change took place in 1912, when new states, New Mexico and Arizona, were added to the United States. Then the number of stars on the obverse was increased from 46 to 48. At that time, the double eagle became the standard for a high-denomination gold coin. Its coinage stopped only during the First World War, from 1917 to 1919, when gold rose in price. At that time, banks refused to sell double eagles at face value, as their gold content was more expensive. But after the First World War, the situation normalized, and the double eagle, due to the devaluation of a number of European currencies, became a kind of standard in European countries as well. The double eagle is one of the most majestic series in the history of world numismatics, the coin stability built the economic power of the United States and the dollar as a world currency. So how did it come to be that the US government began decommissioning and melting down the double eagles? For this, it will be necessary to delve a little deeper into the basics of economics, and briefly and very simply tell about what the gold standard is. The USA had a gold coin standard until 1933. This meant that any paper money was backed by gold. That is, a person could come to the bank and exchange his paper dollars for the corresponding weight in gold, both in coins and ingots. The same standards were also in European countries, but before the First World War. With the beginning of the war, all countries abandoned the gold coin standard, and began large-scale printing of paper money, due to which their currencies were significantly devalued. The USA is the only country that did not abandon the gold coin standard during the First World War. After the end of the First World War, the US economy strengthened significantly, this period in the history of the US is called the Roaring Twenties, then there was a real post-war economic rebellion. And then the stock market crash of 1929 hit, causing the Great Depression. In 1933, Franklin Delano Roosevelt became the President of the United States, by the way, he is a relative of Theodore Roosevelt, the President who lobbied for the reissue of the Double Eagles in 1904. Franklin Roosevelt immediately began to make a series of reforms to overcome the Great Depression, and one of his first steps was the signing of Executive Order No. 6102. According to this order, the population of the United States had to exchange their gold at the rate of $20.66 per troy ounce until May 1, 1933. In the metric system, a troy ounce is equal to 31.1 grams, which roughly coincides with the weight of the double eagle, since the pure gold in the double eagle was 0.96 troy ounces. But the price from the government per ounce was 60 cents higher than the double eagle denomination. In simple words, the US population was forbidden to own gold, it was possible to keep no more than 100 grams of gold, the exceptions were gold belonging to foreign banks in the US, gold for international trade, and gold for professional activities, for jewelers, dentists, etc. Also, rare coins that had historical value were not removed. But, at that time, the double eagles did not fit this definition. All the gold was bought from the population and went to smelting. 
Violations of the law were punishable by stiff fines, $10,000, or 10 years in prison, or both. It is interesting that Roosevelt renounced this executive order when he signed it, saying that he did not draft this order, he was simply given it to sign. But from the economic point of view, this order was very important, it laid the foundation of the dollar as the world's reserve currency. And here it is very important to understand one economic thing, the USA did not abandon the gold standard at that time, the USA abandoned the gold coin standard. That is, now it was not possible to exchange paper money for an equivalent amount of gold in the bank. The purpose of this executive order was primarily to deprive gold of investment opportunities. Because during the Great Depression, gold represented stability, and people increasingly used gold instead of dollars for investments. By the way, economists attribute stability and low inflation to the advantages of the gold standard, but the disadvantages are the constant lack of liquidity and the impossibility of issuing money to overcome crises and accelerate the economy. The USA, after exchanging gold with the population at a price of $20.66 per troy ounce, devalued the dollar and set the price at $35 per troy ounce. This is how the USA was able to accumulate seemingly unimaginable amounts of gold in its vaults. And after the Second World War, the Bretton Woods system was created, where the dollar finally took the place of the world reserve currency, which was backed by gold in the US vaults, with a fixed price of $35 per troy ounce. This is how the dollar gained its world power. This price lasted until 1971, when the United States finally abandoned the gold currency standard, as it could no longer provide all the printed dollars with gold. Thus, in 1976, the world came to the Jamaican currency system, which continues to operate in our time. The main aspects of the Jamaican currency system are the abandonment of the gold standard, gold becoming a common commodity whose price is determined by supply and demand, and the floating exchange rates of various countries. The value of the dollar is now guaranteed by the US economy, not gold. Let's go back to 1933. So the US began to confiscate all gold from the population, including gold coins. And by the way, the order to withdraw the gold was followed very zealously. The US Secret Service arrested people who tried to trade gold without a license, and there were many lawsuits, mostly won by the US government. In 1933, even before this executive order was signed, 445,500 double eagles were minted at the Philadelphia Mint. Two coins from this mintage were selected for the U.S. National Numismatic Collection, the rest of the coins from this mintage were to be melted back into gold. It should be understood that not a single coin from the circulation of 1933 was officially put into circulation, and therefore it is considered illegal, and the security of financial and critical infrastructure in the USA is monitored by the Secret Service. And this is where the confusing detective story of the most expensive coin in the world begins. The fact is that not all double eagles from the 1933 circulation were remelted, some coins were stolen, and at least 20 such coins are now known. Later, during the trials, according to circumstantial evidence, the cashier of the mint, George McCann, and the Philadelphia jeweler, Israel Swift, were accused of theft. McCann allegedly could bypass the inversion and accounting documents by replacing the 1933 double eagles with the 1932 double eagles during the remelting. And the jeweler Israel Swift had close ties with the Philadelphia Mint, so the coins later got to him from McCann. For the first time, they learned about the theft in 1944, when one of the investigative journalists happened to notice these coins at the Stax Bowers auction. The U.S. Secret Service then stepped in and began an official investigation, and by 1952, nine 1933 double eagles had been recovered and destroyed. And it was at this time that the investigation first turned on the jeweler Israel Swift, then due to the statute of limitations, they could not bring him to justice. But, back in 1944, one coin left the territory of the United States, and ended up with King Farouk of Egypt, who was an avid collector. In addition to coins and liquid postage stamps, he also had Faberge eggs, vintage bottles, a papier-mâché press, and much more. 
What is unusual about this story is that Farouk wanted to legalize the coin and applied to the U.S. Treasury Department for an export license, and he got that license. But then the U.S. Treasury realized and demanded the coin back in order to destroy it. But let's not forget the year 1944 in the yard, the Second World War is raging in the world, and everyone, to put it mildly, is not up to coin now. And already in 1952, a coup d'etat took place in Egypt and King Farouk was removed from power. His entire collection was to be auctioned off, including the 1933 double eagle. The US government demanded that the coin be returned to them, the Egyptian government agreed, but as often happens in such situations, the coin disappeared. The next appearance of the 1933 double eagle was in 1996, when British coin dealer Stephen Fenton was arrested at New York's Waldorf Astoria Hotel. Fenton would later confirm under oath that his coin was the double eagle that belonged to King Farouk of Egypt. But Fenton was not so simple, he went further and decided to defend his ownership of the coin in court. The coin that was confiscated from him was not destroyed, because it was 1996, and back in 1974, President Ford signed a law that again allowed US citizens to own gold, so the coins were no longer destroyed, but simply confiscated. By the way, it was after 1974 that double eagles became a great numismatic treasure. At that time, double eagles poured in from abroad, which were preserved in European banks, where at one time they got there through international trade. Another source of double eagles was the sunken merchant ships, on board which at that time often transported considerable sums. Such coins from sunken ships, in addition to their numismatic value, have the aura of a found treasure. But all these double eagles were released before 1933. There was only one coin of 1933, the one confiscated from Fenton. Oddly enough, Stephen Fenton did defend his ownership of the only 1933 double eagle in court. The US Treasury has issued a unique document on the issuance and monetization of the coin, thus making it legal tender. But not everything is so simple, the court ordered to sell the coin at an auction, the recovered funds were to be divided in half between Stephen Fenton and the US government. By the way, before the auction, the coin was stored in the storage of the World Trade Center in New York, and it was moved from there two months before the infamous terrorist attack. The auction took place in 2002 and lasted nine minutes. The coin was sold for $7,590,020. $20 is the face value of the coin that had to be paid to the Treasury to monetize its release. At the time, this was a record that nearly doubled the price of any coin sold before. The buyer was anonymous, but later, when the coin was put up for auction at Sotheby's in 2021, it became known that it was collector Stuart Weitzman. In 2021, this coin was sold at a Sotheby's auction for $18,872,250, which is still the record for the sale of a single coin to this day. And most likely, in a few decades, a new record will be set by the next sale of this double eagle. But that's if they don't legalize 10 more double eagles currently in storage at Fort Knox. Yes. In the mid-zeros, already after Fenton's double eagle was legalized and sold to Weitzman, the descendants of jeweler Israel Swift claimed 10 more 1933 double eagles. They also wanted to legalize them, but lost the courts and appeals. It was on these courts that indirect evidence of the theft of coins by cashier George McCann and jeweler Israel Swift was found. Now these 10 coins are kept in Fort Knox, their authenticity has been proven. And if the US government decides to legalize these coins, of course it will bring down the prices of the 1933 double eagles, but believe me, each such coin will still be worth millions of dollars. So, at the moment, it is known about 20 stolen coins. Nine were destroyed between 1944 and 1952. One coin went abroad, to the King of Egypt, and was later legalized. Another 10 coins are kept at Fort Knox and are illegal to collect. This was the unusual story of the 1933 Double Eagles, the greatest series in US and world gold coin history. And now you know what makes these coins so expensive. Friends, 
If you've watched this moment and haven't liked it, now is the time to like it. Also subscribe to the channel, there will be a lot of interesting things from the world of numismatics and philately.